which type of study is best for determining causation? Well, the answer to this question is an experimental study. Why an experimental study? Because you have a treatment group and you have a control group. So just like the tutoring example that's in the homework, in this homework set, it's a tutoring example. If one group, if, if you have, you know, 50, if you have 100 and they're random, randomly assigned 50 and 50, 50 to each group, and the treatment group get the tutoring, that's the, that's the treatment, and the other 50 get in the control group get no tutoring, that's what the control group means. They don't get the treatment, whatever the treatment is. If you randomly take 100 people and break them into two groups, and then if it comes out different, if there is a different result, then it must be the tutoring, or whatever the treatment is, the drug, the tutoring... That is causing it, because that's the only difference, right? Let me here, let me just... Because that is the only difference between the two groups. So... That's how you determine causation. Causing it is you have to do an experiment, which means experiment specifically means a treatment group and a control group. Take 100 people at random, break them into 50 and 50. 50 of them get tutoring, 50 of them get no tutoring. If there's a different result in their grades at the end, it must be the tutoring causing it because that's the only difference between the two groups. Now you might say, okay, yeah, but I see that and everything, but why wouldn't an observational study work? Observational study, we had another example in this homework set that was observational. Observational cannot determine causation. Why not? Why can an observational study not determine causation? Well, if you just if you just observed that those who chose on their own to go to tutoring got higher grades. Suppose, suppose that's the case. Suppose you just observed that those who chose on their own to go to tutoring got higher grades. You might say, so, you know, you got the, you still got the two groups, right? You got those, you know, group one, they chose to go to tutoring, and group two, they chose no tutoring, and so the only difference between the two, you might say, okay, isn't that the same? What's the, what's, what's the deal here? Isn't that exactly the same? They, um, the only difference between these two groups is what they chose to go to tutoring or to not go to tutoring. And so it seems like it's exactly the same. But no, that's, that's not the truth. There's more to the story than that, right? If they chose to go to tutoring, that means they're probably better students already, right? The fact that they chose something on their own means that there was a difference in them already other than they had been to tutoring. Already they were better students or they wouldn't have chosen to go to tutoring. Probably on average. And these are probably worse students because they didn't choose to go to tutoring. Probably. Of course, there's exceptions and all that. But in general, you see that, that and therefore being a better student could be the cause rather than the tutoring itself. You see the problem? That's, that's an observational study and why an observational study cannot determine causation. Up here, 
an experiment, if you break them, if you take a hundred people at random and break them into 50-50, you're going to have a mix of good and bad students, a mix of those who would have went to tutoring on their own and those who would not. But these 50 are now forced to go to tutoring and these 50, other 50 in the control group are now forced to not go to tutoring. So no matter what was in their heart or mind, their desires beforehand, they're all big mix of good and bad students. If, the di if there's a different outcome, that means it must be because the tutoring is causing it. That's what an experiment does. It determines causation. Whereas an observational study cannot determine causation because you just observed that 50 chose tutoring and 50 chose not, no tutoring. That probably means other things are different about them. You're just observing. So if you're observing behavior, that's a difference in the groups. There's lots of differences in people that would choose tutoring versus people that would not choose tutoring. Lots more are, is different about them other than the fact that going to tutoring, like being a better student. Whereas up here, the only difference, we forced 50 and 50, the only difference then, they were just random 100 people, 50, 50, we forced them, tutoring for half of them, no tutoring for the other half. That's an experiment, and if the results come out different, the only difference is going to tutoring or not. So the tutoring must be causing that difference. That's how they test drugs. That's how they know if a new drug or a new surgery, medical treatment, is working. It's an experiment, and you've got to have a treatment group and a control group broken up randomly. That way you know there's only one difference between those groups. It's getting the treatment or not getting the treatment. So if there's a different outcome, it's being caused by that treatment. That's how we determine causation.